Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tight Line. Glad that you've joined us again this week. I'm excited to be here with my buddy Bob. Last year we were in Maine. This year we're in a, a local pond in west central Alabama. And uh, we're going to be fishing for some largemouth bass today, late spring, early summer. And we're going to see if we can teach you how to catch some. So stay with us. First thing that morning at this pond, we, it would have been a great time to throw a top water, but it was very, very calm. It's overcast skies, it was perfect top water, but I was thinking about doing something a little more subtle, and so I threw this lure called a super fluke. It's basically a soft plastic jerk bait that imitates a dying minnow. The other reason I chose to use it was because there were a lot of overhanging branches, and I could skip that bait up under those bushes, and that's how I caught my first one that day. That was awesome. <laughs> we couldn't, couldn't really see that, but I skipped. I'm throwing a super fluke, and I skipped it way under this bush. <laughs> I almost got hung in the bush, and it was like somebody dropped a rock out of the bush on it, and it's ba-boom. I heard the explosion. It was awesome. <laughs> that was really cool, and it's a pretty good one, too. Not a giant, but it's a really nice one. This pond we're in, Bob's been working on it for several years to get it right. And uh, he's really done a good job of managing it and getting these fish healthy. They look really good. And if he had come off, he'd have been a five pounder. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about two, two pounds, Bob, yeah. two and a quarter and I'm throwing that super fluke and he just crunched it. And we've shot, stocked this thing with threadfin shad and yeah. that's kind of what those flukes mimic is the shad. But these fish look real good. They're wide through here, thick across the back and, and that was fun. That was awesome, Royce. Ba boosh That's pretty good when it feels got like. him one. Well, I can't tell. When they were far out like that, yeah, Bob throwing 363 yards out there in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> but he's what he's got is what we oh nice one, Bob. That's a good fish what right we there, call boys. A wind row. That may be a five pounder. Come on up, big boy. Nice, nice, nice. So what I think what Bob's throwing, Bob, you throwing a Cinco? Yes. What we call a soft plastic stick bait. I think he swallowed it too. And, uh, yeah. Good night, yes, sir. Good job, brother. Are we gonna I, be able to get him out? I think I can get him right. His mouth's big enough, I can put my whole hand in him. All Here right. Go. I'm gonna let you throw him back. It's, How much that fish weigh? Five, five and a half, maybe six. Good and yep. pretty healthy looking fish, too. Yeah, it's kind of thick through the back like it's supposed to be. Good job, man. Go back and grow. Grow some more, buddy. Get him some. Oh, he's a little one. Ain't that little. He ain't as little as I thought he was. That's about a three pounder, nice. it looks like. Nice. This is so cool what we're doing because we're kind of catching them in between springtime and summertime patterns. And we're doing one of my very favorite things, and that's skipping a super fluke around shallow cover. And, uh, That nice one was just up there feeding, I guess. And uh, he got on that fluke. Barely hooked. There we go. That's a, that's a pushing three pounds, probably two and two and a quarter, two and three quarters. That one's probably still recovering from spawning. Yeah, still he's a little, a little skinny. skinny, isn't he? I had to get a new fluke because that one's torn. Actually. That's a pretty important thing to know. If they get torn here, 
You need to get a new one because they'll come down on the hook and you'll miss fish. But I'm going to put it on the hook, come, come out about a quarter, half an inch. I'm going to push it over the hook and let it fall underneath. And then we'll push that nose of it all the way over the eye of the hook. You don't want to see the eye of the hook. And then you just want that hook laying in the bait. So that's where I'm going to push it in. I'm curve it up, push it through. And then it's laying on the back like that. And I back it up just a little bit, skin hook it. That one got a little crooked. Now I can skip it under those bushes and stuff and it won't get hung. The way I'm working this fluke is uh, just jerk, jerk two or three times till you can see it and then you just kind of let it sink out of sight. A lot of people when they skip a bait they want to go sidearm like this but it's really hard to control it when you sidearm it. Uh, it skips kind of all over the place. So what I do is what's called a C cast. In other words, I'm going to make a C with the front end of my rod when I cast it and that way I can stay in a little small confined area get it low to the water because that's the key to skipping and then skip it up there. So I'm going to take it, start it about straight out in front of me, make a roll or a C cast and I'm going to let go straight in front of me and then it skips. Catching them in the middle. He's a he's an acrobatic fish. Makes good film doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you, you paid him a dollar to jump like that didn't you? Bob has these hybrid bass. They're mixed between a tarpon and a largemouth. <laughs> <laughs> I did not let him run with it, and it looks like he swallowed it. Yeah. Again. So how big is that one, Bob? About two and a half, probably. Yeah. Catching a lot of twin brothers out here today. Oop, he hit it. I got it. Yep. Man, he hit it as soon as it hit the water. That's a, that's a supper time fish, Bob. Yep. Those are the size we keep to eat. Well, explain that to me a little bit, Bob, because most people would say, man, I want to keep all the big ones, but this is like a 12, 14 incher. Well, in these farm ponds, it's easy for them to get what the biologists say is bass crowded. And the okay. way that happens is these bass spawn every year and all these young ba young fingerling bass, they start eating to grow. And, and if you're not, and what they do is they eat all the stuff, all the young bait, mm -hmm. before it can grow up big enough to eat for the big ones to have something to eat. So if you don't catch these out, then you, you're never gonna have these big, healthy, gotcha. two to five, six pounders yep. in your pond. You're gonna have a lot of 12 inch cigar looking minnows because uh, there's way too many in here. So the goal each year, and what I've, from the biologists that I've talked to, in a farm pond, you want to take, a well fertilized farm pond, I would say, you want to take about 30 pounds of bass per acre per year. Okay. And what we've tried to do is like 13 inches and down every year, we keep, and everything else we throw back. And we're gonna actually go against what he's saying today. We kept a bunch yesterday, so we're gonna throw most everything back today, but. Well, that one's probably about 14 but inches. Yeah, he's a, he's a pretty decent one, so. But if we were trying to, uh, catch some to eat, we would probably keep that fish because there is a lot of fish that size yeah. in here. Okay. So, um, I've done that for years and it's worked really good. Bob got him one. Man, you gotta quit catching fish. We can't even teach people then <laughs> what you got. And again, Bob's throwing something similar to what I'm throwing, but it's a little different color. And they are swallowing it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not letting them run with it. As soon as I feel the thump, I'm setting the hook. It's called a Cinco, and they're called a Cinco because the magic of how they work is in the sink, and uh, they'll catch them. So we continue to throw shallow and deep. It's probably not really deep, but toward the middle. And Bob got him one on the Cinco again. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. And I don't know if y'all can see that on his line, how that Cinco slid up the line. That's what they're supposed to do. Dude, that thing's a little heavier. Yeah, that's what I told you. 
He's heavier, but he doesn't look that heavy. Mm -hmm. Come on, buddy. He got hooked just in the right spot too, didn't he? In the lip. Bob's throwing this cool little hook too. I'm gonna get him to show it to you. I'm throwing just a regular Y gap. Nice. He's throwing one that's got a little, it's like a spring on the end of it that you can screw your bait into. and Those work really good sometimes. It normally allows you to catch more than one fish on the bait. All right, what I do with this Senko is you've got a spring that's actually attached to the hook and you stick it into the head of the bait and then you screw the bait on and it holds it, keeps it from sliding down the hook when you're, when you're just fishing it and bring it th bringing it over structure and things like that. And, and you try to see where the, where the hook's gonna um, go into the bait so that the bait will stay straight. So it'll be about right there. And then you go straight through it, come up, and then you can take your hook point and put it just into the edge of the, mm -hmm. of the bait and that makes it pretty weedless. Awesome. And what's pretty universal, whether you're fishing a hook like I was or like Bob's throwing, is the bait needs to be straight. If you got it crooked on there, you want to fix it because they're not going to eat it doing this. I, I've fished them for years and years and on a crooked bait, you're not going to get bit. So That's right. We fished most of the morning shallow and, and caught them pretty good, but we went about 30, 45 minutes without getting a bite. So we realized that conditions were changing. So we better change with the conditions if we wanted to catch the fish. That's when we moved offshore, fish what we call a wind row. Uh, in a pond sometimes when guys are creating them, they'll push humps up and put stumps and logs and things like on that. That's what we call a wind row. It's a great place to catch fish in a pond. I think today the key, and this is kind of what you think about in the south when you get to late May, mid, late May, early June, is, is early check shallow, and if they're not shallow, then move offshore. That's kind of what we found this morning. We caught a good number of fish shallow, but after about 8.30, they've seemed to have moved off. So now we're fishing out off the bank. Then they're not real deep, they're just kind of moving toward deeper water. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Got one on the rattle trap, Mr. Bob. That looks like a pretty decent one. Yeah, maybe Is he gonna beat the first one? I don't nah. think so, I think you still got me on him. He looks like he's so fat he can't hardly jump out of the water. I know, <laughs> I think kind of like me. Or maybe you got him foul hooked. I think I got both of his top and his bottom lip pin closed with that trap. Boy, it's so fun. They pull so hard. I tell people all the time, I, you know, most people I fish with, they reel them seven times, swing them in the boat. I'm like, man, I came out here to fish. I'm gonna get the fun out of them. I love how they pull. That's a nice one right there, Bob. That's a good three pounder. Yeah. He may be a little better than that. Like he got a little bump on his head. Yeah. All right, let's see if I can him without getting hooked. Grab him hard. Look at that. That's a little fat fish That's right there. a little nice one. And you know when they're eating it like that, you're throwing the right bait. Golly. He munched it, Bob. One of the things we noticed while we were fishing is that the conditions changed. And when those conditions changed that day with Bob and I, we changed with it and kind of continued to catch fish. And that's the one constant in fishing is that what you can be guaranteed of is that things are gonna change. That morning it was cool and overcast. The overcast kind of burned off. It got hot and sunny and still. And so we had to figure out how to change with the conditions to make sure that we caught fish. Things are always changing like that on the lake. Sometimes they're changing for good. Sometimes they're changing for bad. I've had days when I wasn't catching them and clouds rolled in and I started catching them. I've had days when I was catching them really good and then all of a sudden 10 o'clock comes and, and they shut off like a light switch. So things are constantly changing. You need to be training yourself that when those things change, I need to change my mindset so that I can stay with the fish and continue to catch them. You know, life's like that a lot too. Things change in our life. Sometimes things change for good, sometimes change for bad but there's always gonna be change in our lives. Here's the cool thing about God though. He always wants to change your life for the good. There's a story about a guy in the Bible, it's one of my favorite stories, a guy named Zacchaeus. He was 
one of the most hated people in this town. He was a tax collector, and in those days, tax collectors were particularly crooked. But when he met Jesus, Jesus completely changed his life that day. In fact, money that he had cheated people out of, he paid them back way more than he had cheated them from. And so when he met God, when he met Jesus Christ, he changed his life completely. And you know, God is always wanting to do that. He's always wanting to change us, and it's always for the good. It tells us that in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 8, it says, All things work together for good of those that love him and are called according to his purposes. So change, whether it's good or bad, if you love the Lord and you're called according to his purposes, he always wants to use it for good in your life. Now maybe you don't know the Lord. What he wants to do is to change your life forever. He wants to give you an eternity secured in heaven, but he also wants to give you abundant life here. The way you do that is by simply admitting you're a sinner, asking him to forgive you of your sins, and come and live in your heart and let him be Lord of your life. And man, it'll be the change you'll never ever forget. He'll change you forever. Hey, thanks so much for listening today. Hey guys, what we do at Go Fish Ministries is share the gospel and encourage believers in their walk with Christ. We do this through a variety of events such as wild game dinners, kids camps, men's events, music events, or even if you or someone you know just needs a day on the water. Go Fish Ministries wants to point you toward Jesus and help you know Him better. Contact us through our website. We'd love to serve you any way we can. God bless you and go fish. Got one on a swim bait. What you got, Bob? If I can get him in. So we're trying to figure out how to catch him. It got a little slower and Bob started throwing a swim bait out on that offshore structure that he's made. Got one. Got a nice one. Decent. And look at the size. That just shows you, man, what a predator a bass is. He's, he's pushing two pounds, pound and three quarters, and he ate a swim bait that's, how long is that About big bait? as he is. Eight inches long? Yeah. There we go. Nice job, man. Nice. Yes, sir. Uh, on the rattlebait, are they chasing out there, Bob, or is that just bait? That's bait. There's bait out there. You can see them. Yeah, you can see them running around. This fish right here, he, I think he swiped at it, and then I hit him, and I caught him under the jaw. He wasn't quite on the top, but he's a nice one. Mm, gotta watch that, bro. <laughs> Be real careful when you get him on the outside like that, because he really tried to stick me. On plane again. Mm, yep. We ended up catching a good number of fish on a rattle trap that day, and, and something I wanted to tell you about that is we found out we needed to reel that thing slow. A lot of times, your tendency is to throw that bait out there and just to crank it in as fast as you can. And if you've got a reel that's a six or seven to one reel or above, a lot of times you're fishing above the fish. So if you're not getting bit on a rattle trap, slow that thing down, try to make it bump the cover, and sometimes you'll get more strikes that way. I don't think he's that big, but I hadn't, I hadn't seen him yet. He may be bigger than I think he is. Big. Big. Well, if you don't see him, he's 10 he's pounds. He's a 10 at least. He might be the late record. I don't think he's that big, but he's bigger than I thought when he hit it. Nice. About the same. Two or three pounder. Nice. Fun to catch, they ain't Fun to catch, man. Fun to catch. See if I can't grab this one without him getting on me. Yep. They always get littler as they come to the boat, don't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the way he was pulling, he looked like I a... know, man, they all pull. Oh. He would have been three pounds if he'd come off, wouldn't he? One thing that's important too when you're throwing baits like this, a rattle trap or a crankbait or something like that, you want a, a rod with good backbone, but some give in the tip. See, that's about a, what I'd call about a 60-40. About 40% of it's in the tip, and uh, you got some give so that when the treble hooks come in their mouth, that you don't pull them right out of it, you, you get them in their mouth. Hey, Bob, we've both been Christians a long time. We've known each other since, well, since I was young. You were a little older than me, but anyway. Bellwood Baptist. <laughs> um, but, you know, you've been Christian for 30, 40 years of your life, 
in your life, how do you how do you keep that relationship with Christ fresh? It's easy to get stale and easy to get complacent, you know. And what's kind of the secret for you in your life? Well, you know, of course, it's it's, it's fairly simple actually, and I think that you I would think this is pretty much what it is for all of us is you got to stay in the word and you got to pray okay you know you got to have that relationship you got to continue that relationship and the way to do that is to is is to communicate with him in prayer mm -hmm. and let him communicate you through reading his word right and of course it's not always easy to do that you you, you find times in your life where you don't do it as like you should and those are the times where you it's so easy to get complacent and everything's going good, you know, and right. you don't need God like you think you do, like, you know, like you really do, but everything's going great. And I also think when you have struggles, it's a great, I've grown the most when I have struggles. Mm. I Nobody mean, wants them. No, but, but, that, that's, but that's what happens. You yeah. depend on him when you, when, when those, when you go through that stuff and it's like, uh, my power's made perfect in your weakness. Right. You know? And that's, to me, that's kind of, you know, my best growth, as I said, is when I've when I've struggled. But you know, I it's still trying to have that re relationship on a daily, hourly, you know, every minute type deal um, is kind of what I try to do. And it's the little stuff. I mean, it, it's almost like a constant communication, you know, mm -hmm. all during the day because it's easy to focus. I, I have a hard time focusing on too many things at one time. I'm pretty much a I get focused on something, and I'm, I'm, you know, channel view right there. Right. Um, and but if I'm, if I find myself during the day at work or whatever I'm doing, just kind of constantly in prayer, you know, mm -hmm. Lord, what would you want me to do, in, you know, about this situation or, um, you know, things like that. It really, that's when you kind of feel that peace, and that, you know, things are all good with Him. Absolutely. You know? So you know, getting God's word, however that works best for you. But know that he's he's always there. You can talk to him all the time. And then for me, one of the ways you know when I kind of get my eyes on myself and I start to get complacent, yep. I realize I need to start doing something for somebody else. And That's serve, right. You know, serve others, and so those are ways that you can really stay fresh in your relationship with Christ and go bass fishing. Oh yeah. That's a keeper right there, Bob. Fish are just out on this wind row, and I think if the wind gets up, it'll actually position them a little better. We're starting to get a little breeze, but uh, that fish, everyone I've caught has been right on top of it. We're sitting out in about six, eight foot of water, and the fish we're catching are up there in about two or three foot. And if we were eating fish tonight, we'd be putting him in the box, wouldn't we? Pretty good where I come from. He, he's a little baby. He's a little better. So Bob picked up a little bigger rattle trap and started throwing it. I think that pattern's starting to cold true. Throw a different bait and catch a fish. Fighting like a six pounder. There you go. Oh, not bad. Sometimes if you're trying to catch, catching a lot of 14, 15 inch or small fish, one of the keys is to pick up that little bit bigger bait, catch them. He went to from a half ounce to a three quarter ounce rattle trap. As you can probably see from that bait, he's caught a couple fish on it. Here we go. <laughs> go back and grow a little bit, buddy. Picked up by he was right on top of that wind row. That's pretty I, cool. I picked up and he had already eaten it. He may have it way down. That's a really nice fish, I think. Is that a five pounder? I don't think he's big as yours, but he may be pushing four. This fish right here is not giving up. 
Here you come. Where you come? Maybe a carp. He doesn't want to come up, does he? <laughs> That's one of those, you might be a redneck if you say good and, good and when you got a big fish on. Look at that, Bob. He may be as big as that other one. I think he's a five pounder. He may be that other one. <laughs> but man, they pull like 10 pounders in this pond. Come on, buddy. Come on, there. that's why he's pulling so hard. I got him on the side. He's still a nice fish. Yeah, he is a nice one. Not quite as big as we thought, but when you foul hook them like that, uh-huh. He just did all that so he could get me wet, didn't he? Come here, brother. I'm gonna try to do this without getting a hook in my hand. Ooh, nice. Look at there. So Bob, some of these Good. fish have got little things on their side. What do you think that is? I don't know. It might have been he hit something, a stump or something as you were reeling him in, or, or heck, it I don't might know. have been from rubbing on one when they were spawning. Yep. But we're gonna let her go and yeah, cause her tail's still a little torn up too. We're gonna let her go and spawn again next year, Mr. Bob. That's a good one. That is a good one. Come on, man. You won't beat that you fight. You can catch one you? like that and they look, look a little lifeless. Hold them under the belly till they just kind of swim out of your hand. It's been a really interesting, pretty typical late spring day. Uh, we started early throwing shallow with flukes and, and uh, sinkos and and had a pretty good morning, but about nine o'clock, it was like somebody shut that switch off. Even though we still had some shade around the banks, it's like these fish knew it's time to move out. So they moved out onto what we call humps or wind rows. We started catching them on rattle traps and slow moving baits uh, like a speed crawl and things like that. But the rattle trap was probably the, the key. And the reason it was the key is it triggers strikes. They'll come over stumps and logs and stuff and those fish sitting behind them will hit those baits. So, if you get to fish in late spring in the south, start shallow and then work your way out of the shallow areas and hopefully you'll have some success. We sure appreciate you guys being with us uh, this week. Always good to be with my buddy Bob. We've been friends a long, long time. It's good to fish with him and enjoy being on his lake today and really appreciate you guys being with us for the fishing and hope you learned something about fishing as well as about living life in God's word and praying and stuff like that. But thanks so much, man. Enjoyed it. Had a Any great time. Day. Hey, thanks for being with us and join us next time. I want to thank my good friend Bob for letting us come out to his place. Man, we had a great time fishing, had a great time being together, fishing, catching fish, and talking about the Lord. So just want to say thanks to him. Thank you guys for being with us this week and join us next time.